break when we come back from your Phoenix Suns. Bryce O'Neal joins the show. Run it back, returns. Run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back. That's right. Seventh season in the leagues, played for the Nets, Jazz, and now, of course, the Suns, where he landed right at the deadline. Perfect timing, Royce O'Neal. Thanks for joining us. It looks lovely. And uh, the sun on your face. What a what a day for you to start out. All right, we got to talk a little bit about last night. Rockets, big win for you guys. Uh, you played 37 minutes. I was going to ask you if you're tired, but then we just talked about Josh Hart playing 47 minutes and 10 <laughs> seconds. Have you ever heard of such craziness, sir? <laughs> Are you hey. tired? I have never. I'm not tired. Uh, I mean, I think he definitely is tired, but uh, hey, that's impressive by him. I that's mean, I guess I'm just trying to play every minute of the game. Every minute so far. Let me ask you, are you, uh, I mean, we're happy that you landed in Phoenix. This is the team everyone's keeping their eye on. Are you pleased with your role so far there? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, these guys welcomed me since day one. Uh, just allow me to be myself. I mean, uh, whether I'm, I mean, bringing that defensive inten intensity, uh, playmaking, and, you know, just doing whatever I do for us to win the games. Royce, even last night, just stuff in the stat sheet, 11, 7, 6, and 3 for you just across the board. Obviously, a different role now in, in Phoenix, really a, in a lot of ways like you were last year in Brooklyn, just, just playing on a contending type of team. But what were your emotions when you get traded from a team that's out of the plane right now in Brooklyn to a team that's trying to compete for a title in Phoenix? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's my first time, like, being traded midseason. Uh, it's definitely a whirlwind. But, uh, I mean, my time in Brooklyn was great. I mean, you know, from, from the moment I got there to, you know, trade that line and guys showed me a lot of respect and, you know, allowed me to be myself, come in, play a different role, and, you know, coming to Phoenix, you know, expanding my role, allowing me to be myself, and then, you know, coming and compete every day. Um, did you, we were always kind of like figuring out how guys find out they're traded. It's fascinating to those of us who are just mere mortals, but how did you find out you were traded? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was actually playing call of duty, um, <laughs> you know, and then, uh, and then like, you know, I wasn't trying to keep up with like all the rumors and stuff that was going around. And, uh, you know, my friends kept calling me and then my agent calls me, uh, like, right, right. As it happened, I'm in the middle of a game and then I just like, kind of like threw the controller down and, you know, told my friends I got to go. So, uh, I mean, it happened real fast. And, um, you know, I was I was excited just for another opportunity to keep playing. I just love the visual that you're like, why is everyone bothering me? I'm in the middle of a game. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. Right. Um, maybe you can explain this thing that Suns fans do, because I still I don't get it. So when a player heads to Phoenix, they do this thing where they go and see if that player has ever tweeted about Hooters. The restaurant. Uh, they did it with Devin Booker, who had tweeted about Hooters back in 2012. They did it with you. And sure enough, <laughs> you had done it before as well. What What is this tradition? To be honest, I have no idea. Um, like, when I got traded, I was like, yo, why is, why is like, I'm trending for Hooters? <laughs> and then I see, uh, I see, you know, me, Book, you know, Katie and Brad all literally tweeted something about Hooters, and I was just like, oh, okay. It's the weirdest tradition I've ever heard, and I Call love Call me crazy. Hooters. Call me crazy. I think they're fantastic chicken wings. I go there for <laughs> only the chicken wings and the chicken wings only. <laughs> Obviously. Right. I, I, I haven't been in years, so. <laughs> uh, Royce, obviously coming from Brooklyn to, to Phoenix now, what's been the biggest difference in the two organizations, uh, you know, from 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 the Nets to the Suns? Uh, I mean, I only been here for like two two weeks plus. Uh, I mean, both organizations are great. I mean, uh, you know, just the just the way that you know they you know handle themselves. I mean, Brooklyn was a great time. You know, meeting those guys uh, and then spending time with getting to know them, being around them. These guys had a lot of value in me. You know, being one of the leaders on this team on the team, and then you know being in Phoenix. Kind of the same way. Uh, I mean, these guys, you know, wanted me here and, you know, trying to just be myself, allow me to be myself each and every day and, you know, come in and be the player and person that I am. Yeah. 
And then obviously a few days after you get traded, the Nets fire Jacques Vaughn. Is, is that something that you saw coming or was that a complete surprise to you? Uh, definitely could complete surprise. I didn't, I didn't even know that I was coming. Uh, I was surprised. I thought, you know, my friends were just playing around. They was like, yo, Jack Vaughn got fired. They're like, not. Nah. Hmm. And then I was like, oh, wow. Crazy. Cold world. Royce, this is, this is now the second time you're playing with KD, Kevin Durant. Um, obviously, you guys had some success last year before the trades, and now it seems like it's going well here. Do you feel like you've developed that on-court chemistry with him? Like, it, it seems pretty natural, but how do you feel? And is he a different player now that you're seeing him a year later than you saw him in Brooklyn? Is he a different leader? How is he carrying himself compared to what he was? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I feel like, you know, both times, Brooklyn and Phoenix, I mean, uh, you know, just the you know, on the court chemistry that you develop in an off the court. I mean, to have a top 75 and, you know, one of the best to play the game, you know, have your back, you know, one play with you uh, means a lot. And, um, you know, just competing with him every day. I mean, now it's just like, I mean, I feel like he's a little more calm and relaxed, but, uh, I mean, he's still being a leader every day, you know, showing up, competing, you know, in games, telling us, you know, keeping us accountable, accountable and, you know, him just, being accountable and being able to talk to him again. So that's, I, I'm glad you mentioned that, that he's still out there being a leader because Charles Barkley, I, I don't know what the deal is, but you know, did the thing again where he's talking about KD and that he's not a leader, which seems like very strong words to say. You just said he is. So what, maybe clear it up for those of us who don't understand it. What kind of leader is he? I mean, he's a vocal one. I mean, uh, you know, during the games, you know, he's getting on guys, you know, um, telling us, you know, what he sees and, you know, now let's just be ourselves. I mean, and then every day showing up, working hard, uh, you know, setting a standard, you know, for us to uphold and, you know, just being able to communicate with everybody, being around everybody. Um, I think, you know, he's keeping us in direction. You know, he wants to win every day. I like that. I like that. Uh, a couple of years ago when you were with the Jazz and playing the Nets, KD did the, a little too small um and then now you guys obviously are good friends um has do you, does that come up do you bring it up when you guys see each other the first time after all this do you joke about it how is this handled nah i mean i no. should bring it up next time you in should. practice you know i'm i'm gonna give him a bucket and i'm gonna do it to him so but uh so nah, i think that's just the, that's just the competitiveness in us and uh you know taking the challenge yeah, you did your first, you did your first twenty and ten game on Sunday. Obviously, had to feel great in front of you, your new home crowd. How, what was that like? Uh, it was amazing. I mean, these fans, you know, welcomed me since day one. Um, and then, you know, first twenty and ten game, especially I mean, ABC, uh, I mean, against the Lakers. And then I got my first start, so I guess it was like the perfect moment that you you know couldn't that you can only imagine when it happened. So, and we won the game. That's all that meant. By the way, I don't know if you saw this, but after the game, they they actually took away one of your, they took away one of your rebounds. So is there anything you want to say to to the official <laughs> stack keeper? Nah, nah, nah. They got to get that back. I need I need that twenty team. <laughs> I need that. I need that. It's rude. So rude. Um, this footage. I'm just happy we get to play this right now. So you're running a basketball camp a few years ago. You go one on one <laughs> against your mom. Sir, right. I need you to defend oh, yourself right here. No. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh man, so you know, you know, during the camp, you know, my mom, she always tried to challenge me. You know, she might check up. Uh, when I was little, she used to, you know, lock me up. But then I told her, I was like, "Yo, I mean, now you know, I got more moves and stuff." So she was like, "I can't post her up." So she, you know, she's bumping me, and I'm like, "Yo, like." I got to go somewhere. And then, so when I spin and I see she's falling, I'm like, wow, um, do I help her or do I shoot it, make the basket? Look, look. And I was like, let me make the basket first and I help her. Wow. Up. You made and a decision, ask, Royce. <laughs> <laughs> but if you ask her, she would tell you herself that she would want me to make the basket. It didn't help her up, though. But it went We're viral everywhere. Yeah. It went viral everywhere. And that's all she really wanted. She was like, hey, I can't post it unless it goes viral. So I was like, well, it did. So <laughs> it this did. was uh yeah. this was like a reverse pull chair like you did on Dylan Brooks last night. <laughs> so she went this way. <laughs> he went this way. Right. Oh man. Right. Uh Royce, you hadn't been the Suns for for you know for more than a week. And I gotta ask, the the Isaiah Stewart drew Eubanks 
what the hell? What was what was that like? What was that Sheesh. about? How did the team react to that? Because I, there was nothing real, no fireworks after or anything, right? Yeah, I mean, it was. I mean, I was surprised and shocked that happened. I mean, uh, you know, as we're supposed to be in brotherhood and stuff like that happens, mm -hmm. but uh, you just like wonder why. And then, I mean, we ended up winning the game, so you know, that's we got Drew's back, and you know, that's all that matters. Stuff like that definitely shouldn't happen. Mm -mm. Roy, so you go for playing the Eastern Conference. Now you're in the West. The West is absolutely stacked. I know you know, just looking at the standings, every night you're playing against a top team in the West. Like, is it exciting for you now, now knowing you're under that spotlight every day in the Western Conference and every game has, has such great meaning for you guys? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, especially, you know, if you look at the standings right now, it's but one game, like one through or two through eight. So like every game really matters. Uh, but, you know, just, you know, especially being here in the spotlight with these three guys, uh, Book, KD and Brad, you know, always, you know, games that's, you know, teams are going to come up for us. Always, you know, being in the spotlight. So, uh, I mean, we're going to get teams best shots and, you know, we got to play our best basketball to win these games. And it's just fun every night just to compete. You know, play against the West, knowing every game matters, especially from here on out. It's going to be a hell of a final stretch going on here. Uh, before you got to the league, you played overseas a bit, a little bit in Germany, a little bit in Spain. Biggest difference between playing over there versus here? Is there something that would surprise us? Uh, I would say a couple of the rules. I mean, it's no like defensive three seconds over here. Um, it's more like a team concept. I mean, you find ways to move without the ball, play without the ball. Uh, you know, it's definitely a team, team oriented, you know, over there. Uh, every game really matters. Uh, so, I mean, they, they, the fans are just crazy. I mean, they love basketball. And so from there, top to the bottom, top to the bottom, the leagues are good. Is there a, is there a rule that you would, wouldn't mind the NBA bringing over here? I always wondered about the when the ball's like bouncing on the rim, trying to hit it off. Uh, I mean, I feel like that would be a little, that would be a rule to try. Uh, I mean, it could have helped to advantage, especially like late game situations and stuff like that. I like this. I like the new rules idea. Like, let's just bring new stuff over. Uh, this has been a pleasure, Royce. Best of luck rest of the way. It's going to be a great stretch, a great playoff run. We wish you luck. Thanks for the time. And we'll be right back. I appreciate you. Good luck, Royce. Back, yeah. Run it over, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it over, run it back. Yeah.